Hallo, meine liebste Freundin. Hier ist dein sehr guter Freund Sam. Und es ist Zeit für ein paar Max. Ein um, bittersweet Tutorial, this time around. Um, I know they're all a little bit bittersweet. Um, I'm not sure why I say that, but uh, in this case, it is bittersweet. This will be one of the last tutorials from Berlin, the beautiful city of concrete and cheap beer. But, um, you know, no use crying over spilled Rottler, as they say. Uh, instead, let's, um, let's focus in on what really counts in life. Let's focus in on some, uh, let's not focus on, like most Berliners, let's not focus on the um, outside world and the cold and cloudiness in reality, let's focus instead on messing around with meaningless bits here in our computerized playground. So, on that note, let's look at doing some bump mapping. So bump mapping is a really fun technique that you can use, uh, <laughs> that you could use around the house to do the dishes and tidy up. No, it's a graphics processing technique. Uh, what it basically does is you've got some geometry, a plane, a sphere or whatever, and you tell Open GL that um, you want to make that surface arbitrarily bumpy. And um, you do that by providing a number of vectors, these are surface normals, that tell OpenGL how to reflect light off a given point on your surface. And OpenGL then uses that to um, change the kind of the appearance of the bumpiness of the surface of your object. So I can show you kind of what that will look like ultimately. Here is a nice bumpy surface that I've made. Um, you can see it's just some soft noise that I'm kind of scrubbing through. But then if we play a little music in iTunes, you will see how the graphics here are affected um, I'm just piping in the audio and then measuring its amplitude and using that to adjust the some parameters of this noise and in Max that looks like this. It's pretty cool. I mean um, you know, it is what it is. It's a cool technique and there's lots of playing around that you can do. So, uh, let's dive right in and get started, shall we? Uh, the basic idea is we're going to make a, a noisy matrix and then calculate the surface normals using jit.gl.pix. So you will need max 6 and you will need gen in order for to, to, to do this. You can do it without jit and gen, um, but it's going to be much easier if you do. So let's start with the boilerplate OpenGL stuff. Um, highly recommend you use the max toolbox to accelerate your patching. Max toolbox, take your patching to the next level. Um, or something like that. Uh, in any case, let's make a uh, key object to get our key presses. Cell 27 to select for the escape key. A toggle, a message box, full screen, full screen dollar sign one, and a jit dot window. Fantastic. And let's put that down here, uh, throw in a, a toggle, a Q Metro 33, uh, trigger, bang, bang, erase, jit, jit.gl.render. Uh, that looks good. And I send pre-render. So this is obviously just going to be uh, sending out bangs uh, 30 times a second and then we're going to send each of those bangs to this JITGL render that tells it first to erase and then to render. Um, so there's our OpenGL stuff all set up and if I turn this on our window turns slightly gray, escape makes us go full screen, we are cooking with thermonuclear gas or something. Okay, having set all that up, next we need some noise. So let's grab JIT.BFG, JIT.BigFuzzyGraphics, open up the help file by alt clicking and come over to fractals. Uh, fractals are great. It lets you add noise on top of noise. So you can do low resolution fuzzy noise on top of high resolution pointy angry noise. And the effect is very, very pretty. Um, go ahead and grab all this stuff up here. This lets you pick what kind of noise you're going to use and set the octaves, which is the number of different noises that you're going to sum together. Roughness, which is how much you weight uh, low resolution, low frequency noise versus high frequency noise, and lacunarity, which is what it says, the spacing between the uh, fractals. Also grab this prepen set adder basis, all this offset stuff, the BFG and the normalize, copy that, close the help file, and paste it into your patch, which should now look something like this. Okay, we are in amazing shape now. 
We are in better shape than John Baisdow on steroids. What happened to John Baisdow? I missed that guy. Copy the send pre-render over here. Uh, delete the send, replace it with the receive, and connect that to jit.bfg like so. And now, in addition to uh, rendering each frame, before we do that, we're sending a single bang to this jit.bfg and making some noise. Also throw in a jit.matrix here uh, that says one float 32, 256, 256. The reason we're doing this is jit.bfg outputs a three-dimensional matrix that is 256 by 256 by one. Um, most other jitter objects will balk at this and refuse to work like the lazy um, millennial objects that they are. And so you have to put it in the perfect format um, by scraping off that one dimension. This jit.matrix one float 32, 256, 256 takes the matrix coming out of this jit.bfg and gives you just a two, a two dimensional matrix to work with, which most jitter objects are much happier to work with. Uh, make a jit.p window, connect that to this jit.matrix so we can see our noise. We can't see it because we haven't set any parameters yet, but if I'm going to go with fractal hetero, uh, noise simplex, set the number of octaves to, I don't know, 3, the roughness to 0 0.5, the lacunarity to 2, and here's kind of uh, some noise. Not that exciting yet, but it will get more exciting, I promise. Um, <laughs> That's what he said. So we can now uh, actually do the fun part of this, which is calculating the surface normals. So to calculate surface normals, what we're going to do is use the cross product. Cross product might not scare you, but it scares me. And so uh, to reassure myself about um, the stability of the universe and the ease of working with the cross product, I hold up my right hand, I point my index finger at the screen, my thumb up towards the, towards the heavens, and my uh, uh, middle finger I point to the left out towards the um, Spätkauf where I buy my beer just up the street. So pointing at the screen with my index finger, at beer with my ring finger, and up at the sky with my um, thumb, and what I've done here is created the corner of a box. And if my pointer finger and middle finger were two vectors, then my thumb would be the cross product of those two vectors. And so maybe you can see where we're going with this. We're going to calculate the thumb, the surface normal, pointing up out of this noise by taking how fast the noise is changing in the x direction, how fast it's changing in the y direction, turning those into two vectors, and then taking their cross product. Sounds as easy as it is. Uh, go ahead and make a jit.gl.pix. Open it up and delete all this useless stuff in here. We don't need it. So first thing we need to do is sample a point that is one pixel to the right of the point that we've been given. So obviously we need a sample object. I'm going to set it at bound mode uh, mirror, which just means if we sample off the edge of the matrix, mirror back um, into the matrix. And then to get a point that is one to the right of the matrix that we're given, or the input point that we're given, we use the cell object, which gives us the coordinates of the point we're working with. We're going to add one zero to that, which adds one to the x dimension. Divide by dim, which is the total dimensions of the matrix, which normalize it into coordinates that sample is happy to work with. And then that's it. There's taking a sample. And then we just need to pass the input matrix here so that sample knows what to sample. We can subtract the one from the other, and this is our rate of change in the x direction. It is as simple as that. I'm going to multiply this by an arbitrary um, value that I'm going to call h scale, and then make a new param here, param h scale, and set it to be 1 by default. And this is great. So this uh, lets us arbitrarily decide how much we want to scale the, um, the rates of change when we actually work with this data. So there's our x coordinate. Um, y, or rate of change in x, rate of change in y is just as easy, except instead of adding 1 to x, we subtract 1 from y. Cool, so here's x, here's y. We now pack these into vectors, of which we can take the cross product. The x vector is going to be 1 followed by 0 followed by this rate of change. The y cross product is going to be uh, 0 followed by 1 followed by this rate of change. And then we take their cross product just like so, and scale these by some value times, I'm going to call this n scale, and that, my friends, is it.
unless I've goofed something up horribly. Uh, param n scale one. Unless I've goofed something up horribly, everything should be fine. Famous last words, absolutely, but uh, cool. It looks pretty good to me. Let's double check by throwing in a matrix. We should get something that looks mostly blue um, because most of our stuff should be pointing up out of the page. It should look mostly blue, but not not that blue. That's a little bit too blue. Uh, the reason for that is we need to play with our parameters a little bit, our H scale and N scale parameters. So I'm going to make a param um, N scale dollar sign one and then another one here for the H scale. And good values, I think, for N scale and H scale tend to be something like 10 for N scale and um, minus 20 for H scale. Yeah, and that's a little bit more what we should be looking at is uh, something like that for our uh, surface normal matrix. Oops, cool. So with that all working, there's our normal matrix. The last thing we need to do is make a jit.gl.grid shape and a jit.gl.material. Let's make this grid shape uh, uh, I should leave it. And then we connect this matrix uh, up to the normals coordinate, or normals coordinate, the normals inlet of JITGL matrix, the output of the material to the JITGL grid shape, and then finally let's add a JIT.GL.handle to our JITGL render so that we can spin and move in GL space. And finally, drum roll please, let's take a look at our object. Cool, so here's our sphere. Well, that's way, way less impressive than I was hoping for, but there's our sphere. You can see it's got some cool kind of bumpy distortion on it where we've uh, applied our bump matrix. Maybe you can see, it's not that obvious. Uh, if we increase the lacunarity, we should get some more high resolution. Let's up our scale too to like, and now you're starting to see it. Here's the bumpiness, uh, and here's our object with that bumpiness applied to it. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, okay, so now how can we play around with this? Well, let's start by applying some sound to it. Um, first thing I want to do, maybe let's try um, panning back and forth in X and Y. So I'm going to make a cycle object, cycle tilde, give it the arguments 0 0.01. Um, so this will be cycling every 100 seconds. Snapshot 10. So we'll take a snapshot of that audio every 10 milliseconds and then multiply this by 20, say. And let's see what this looks like when we hook it up to our X and our Y. So you can see we're just kind of um, scanning across this surface and this is what that looks like when it's applied to our sphere. That's pretty cool. Um, if, if a little bit fast, I'm gonna drop this, well, Let's leave it as it is. It's pretty cool looking. Okay, cool. So now uh, let's get some sound in here. I'll make an easy ADC. And this is going to work just because I'm pulling in audio from uh, iTunes using Soundflower. And then let's do a peak amp 10. This will give us the peak amplitude every 10 milliseconds. Um, let's throw, also throw in an easy a a DAC so we can actually hear the audio coming out. I think that would be cool. And then um, take this peak amp and let's uh, scale 0, 0 0.5 to be between 1 and um, 5. And this will just be, we'll attach this to the number of octaves, say, which will be how rough the surface is. Now if I go to iTunes, let's play something like, uh, I'm a robot, but that's okay. That sounds good to me. Perfect. Cool, check it out. Could also, oops, could also add maybe a little smoothing to this. Um, we could throw in a line object. Probably not, but anyway. That's kind of cool, I like that. Let's, uh, 
make the cycle cycle a little bit more slowly, maybe every 10 seconds or so. I ended up being much faster. I think the range is just way too high. Let's uh, leave it cycling as fast as it is, but maybe only... Um... Oh, it's cool. Cool. So you're probably much cleverer than me. You can come up with even cooler ways to mess with um, OpenGL and uh, this object, but uh, it's so cool. Alright, in any case, I hope this has been a fun and interesting introduction into uh, bump mapping for all of you out in the out in the world, and um, thanks again for watching. I hope that was fun-educational, uh, and I'm looking forward to uh, the next city after Berlin. Um, for anyone who's out in Barcelona, um, you know, you want to talk facts, get in touch. In any case, thanks for watching, and I hopefully will see you guys very soon. Take it easy.